Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the second in a series of Alir Cloud Cash Management webinars. Thanks so much for taking time to join us this afternoon. Today's topic will be the bank reconciliation processes, next stop the cloud in the Oracle Cloud Cash Management solution. Just uh, getting underway here, we'll cover the fact, like I mentioned, this is the second in a series of podcasts and webinars about the uh, Cloud Cash Management solution. The first uh, webinar is available on the Allure webinars page. If you missed that, it's an overview of the Cloud Cash Management tool. Like today, like I mentioned, we'll be speaking about bank reconciliation. We'll also cover forecasting, payments, and smart view functionality um, as some of the other topics. Just a couple of logistical points. As you well heard, everyone has been placed on mute for the entirety of this 30-minute webinar. There is a portal that you can submit your questions. Please, if you do have questions, submit your, them through the portal. And we do have about five minutes scheduled at the end to address that Q&A. And this webinar has, is being recorded and will be sent with a link for that recording via email at the conclusion of the webinar. The, gen, the agenda for this afternoon's conversation, we'll do a short introduction of the Allure team that will be presenting. We'll talk just a little bit about the general navigation and tasks that are related to the bank reconciliation functionality in the cloud cash management tool. And then we'll get into the details around bank statement processing, the actual account reconciliation process, some of the statement accounting processes, and then we do want to just touch more generally on some of the service offerings that Alir does offer in this cloud cash management space for the Oracle Cloud solution. So starting with introductions, my name is Kevin Schuster. I'm on the Alir business development team. I cover the West region for the organization. We also have Michael Graham on the line. Mike, if you want to introduce yourself. Thank you, Kevin. My name is Michael Graham. I'm one of the partners at Alir and I head up this uh, cloud cash management, sort of treasury management uh, group within our firm. Tony? Thanks, Mike. We also have Tony, Tony Barbato, who will be doing the majority of this, the presenting today. Tony? Thanks, Kevin. So like Kevin said, my name is Tony Barbato, and I'm a part of Alir's cloud cash management team, and I'll be your presenter today. And as we touched on before, we'll be going over bank reconciliation, and its functionality in Oracle Cloud Cash Management. Perfect. Thanks, Tony. Before we do that, just want to remind everyone a little bit more about Alir. We truly are the uh, treasury management experts when it comes to the Oracle space and just more generally speaking. Um, but just a bit more about us. We've been in business for over 12 years. We take a lot of pride in partnering with our clients to help them implement, integrate, upgrade, and get the most out of their software investments. We also do have a, a portion of our business that is more focused on the strategic guidance aspect. So the underlying business processes of your treasury management processes, uh, what can you do to find efficiencies and automate more of what you're doing today? Uh, specifically within the cloud space, we do have the Oracle Treasury Cloud practice, which Mike heads up. We have capabilities across the entire Oracle ERP solution as well as the Oracle HCM solution. We are very proud of our gold partner cloud standard certification with Oracle and the over 180 clients, many of them the Fortune 500 that we've helped to serve over our 12 years. And this slide, just a, a brief representation. The main aspect we always like to highlight with this slide is that we have experience across numerous industries types of corporations, big and small. We've been able to prove ourselves as the go-to treasury experts and as the Oracle Cloud Solution is built out for cash management, we look forward to continuing to hold that position in the future. So just to understand a little bit about who's joining us today, we do have our first of three poll questions. Does your firm have the need to perform reconciliation on any of the following payment types? Please select all of those that apply. I'm guessing batch ACH payments, wires, checks, all quite standard, but also first presentment items, and as well as creating accounting receivable deposits from the bank statements. So we'll give it a couple more seconds here. Please do click 
through on the poll, answer all those that apply. We appreciate understanding just a bit more about who's attending the webinar today. Looks like everybody's getting their votes in. And we can close it. So obviously wires, checks, and batch ACH payments were very uh, typical that we um, do have a lot of interaction with. Seems like a pretty good mix. Uh, most individuals on the call today generally cover all five, if not most of those five. Very good, thanks so much for that. Moving on, I'm gonna hand it over to Tony to get into the bulk of this conversation. Tony? All right. <clears throat> righty, so to get things started, uh, this is Oracle Cloud's homepage, and it contains a set of functional icons that the user can customize to show modules that are relevant to their position. Um, like the screenshot shows, uh, clicking into an icon displays subpages such as bank statements and reconciliation under cash management here. Tasks are Oracle Cloud's way of configuring um, each of these uh, processes, such as automated bank reconciliation or managing bank accounts. And this is through the setup and maintenance icon on the home screen. And to get into bank statements and reconciliation, we'll start with the bank statement process. Um, so we receive the bank statement from our banking partners and we import that into Cloud Cash Management. Oracle Cloud Cash Management supports BAI2, Swift MT940, Edifact Finsta, and ISO versions one through three, and those are the bank statement formats. These statements can be uploaded automatically through the payment transmission configuration or manually through the document repository, and that's in Oracle's web center through the Cloud Cash Management. We then review this statement online in Cloud Cash Management and select a statement date um, or a date range to reconcile the statements. The auto reconciliation processes uses matching rules as well as tolerance rules to match a bank statement line to transactions that are actually in our system. And then we take the time to review the auto recon results and determine if transactions need to be manually reconciled or if we need to leave them as an exception. And when we're done with the reconciliation process, the statement is marked as reviewed to prevent future unreconciliation. So to get into bank reconciliation, a few things need to be set up in order to efficiently reconcile the statement. So transaction type mapping, so that associates a transaction type, whether that's Lockbox, wire, an EFT, an ACH, uh, to an application transaction, um, accounts payable, accounts receivable, or payroll. And then transaction codes are predefined codes used to identify transactions on the bank statement file. Parse set rules, parse rule sets, transform data when the bank statement is actually imported. And here at Alir, and our clients that we have used have done this in the past. Um, it's most commonly used to parse data from the statement addenda into a more specific statement line field. And we'll get into reconciliation matching rules in the next few slides after our poll coming up. But reconciliation tolerance rules, so these actually assist in the process as a date and or amount tolerance. And these are applied to each bank account what we have seen customers benefit from this is amount tolerances when they reconcile foreign currency transactions. We see differences in rounding or fluctuating conversion rates. Um, so setting this amount tolerance solves these issues. And the date tolerance allows a range of dates to be applied during the reconciliation process. Sometimes you might have a transaction that falls outside of banking hours, but it's included in our system on that same day. Uh, so that allows for reconciliation between those two transactions. And reconciliation rule sets are assigned to each bank account in the cloud. Our best practice is to always assign a one-to-one -one matching rule and then other rules based off how the bank account is actually set up 
So if it is an account that has batch tra batch ACH transactions, um, it'll have the one to many rule on there. And here's our poll question two, so I'll hand things off to Kevin. Perfect. Thanks, Tony. So second poll question, what system are you currently utilizing to perform bank account reconciliation? We understand that uh, in the real world, realistically, there's probably more than one solution, one system that you're utilizing to get this work done. Is it an on-premise Oracle solution? Is it a cloud-based treasury management tool or another on-premise uh, treasury tool that you're using maybe as part of a larger ERP? Is it a, one of the specialized third-party reconciliation tools? or uh, the Excel uh, system, which is obviously the uh, probably most often that we, we see. Just a couple more seconds here, get folks to put in the answers to this question. Again, this just helps us understand exactly the type of individuals attending and how you're doing your business processes today. All right, I think we'll close out the poll here. Looks like primarily folks who are currently using an on-premise solution from Oracle today um, obviously, mixed in there is uh, the Excel system, not a big surprise. And it's a little higher than in past conversations that we've seen in terms of cloud-based treasury tool or the specialized third-party tools. So thanks so much for answering that. I'll turn it back over to Tony here to pick back. All righty. Thanks, Kevin. So our reconciliation matching rules that I had touched on uh, briefly before, so these rules are set up and applied to each bank account based on types of transactions that are coming in and out of the bank account. So matching types group bank statement lines to system lines defined by previous criteria. And the next few slides will go over each of the matching types in a little more detail and give an example. So that's the one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-one, -one, many -to -one, and many-to-many -many matching rules. The matching criteria that's actually what the system looks for when matching transactions on the bank statement to the transactions in Oracle Cloud Cash Management. So in this example that you guys are seeing right now, the amount and date are selected criteria for reconciliation. Um, and it also can be criteria that is uh, the reference, the transaction type, and then it gets a little more advanced criteria um, if need be. So we'll get into each one of these matching rule types. So a one-to-one -one rule, that's when there's one bank statement line that matches to one system side. An example would be a cash management wire. We send it out, so, it is our, so it's on our system side, and the bank statement has just a single transaction within it when we receive it. A one-to-many rule, this matches a bank statement transaction to multiple system side transactions. An example of a one to many scenario is to think of AP ACH batch payments where the bank has a single statement line, let's say ACH settlement, and that's tied to a couple hundred or even thousand transactions that are in our system. And we've seen this benefit analysts and accountants uh, numerous times uh, implementing this uh, when he or she has to manually do this in some cases. The many to one rule that matches multiple bank statement lines to one system side transaction. And a quick example of this would be if multiple wires were sent out for one open voucher on the system side. The many-to-many -many rule is the least common among the clients that we've worked with before. And an example of this scenario is when multiple AR deposits are being applied to multiple open receivables within our system. And then to get into bank statement accounting, so this process actually creates system-side transactions for first presentment transactions like we touched on earlier during the reconciliation process. And when I say first presenting transactions, these are transactions that actually originate from the bank statement, such as account analysis fees or interest fees or ZBA debits and credits. And in order to create the transaction, predefined criteria is configured to actually search the bank statement addenda. And so the addenda may contain 
for an account analysis fee, it might say bank fee, or for ZBA debits and credits, it might say transfer to or from account one, two, three, four. And so that writes the rule, looks for that, matches and creates the accounting that's predefined. So these transactions are always reconciled on a one-to-one -one matching basis as an external transaction. Oracle Cloud Cash Management also gives the analyst or manager the availability to view the bank statement and system side transactions before actually submitting the auto recon process. And manual reconciliation can be performed on this page, but from our experience at Allier, setting up and submitting the auto reconciliation process is much more reliable and efficient. And next we're gonna see what the parameters and results look like in Oracle CM. So when our bank accounts are completely set up, we can submit our reconciliation by our selected parameters. So we select our bank account and then statement ID or a range of statement dates. And if we ran a week of statement dates, they'll all be processed um, at the same time. So we can see what that page looks like. And lastly, before I hand things off to Mike, we can view our reconciliation results, which actually, <clears throat> what you can see here. And so we can see which uh, transactions were reconciled on our statement. And in this example, group one here at the bottom of the screenshot, it contains a one-to-one -one match from the statement and the system side, in this case, receivables. And from this page, transactions can also be manually unreconciled. Uh, when reviewing the reconciliation results page. So now I will hand things off to Mike to talk a little bit about Allier service offerings. Thank you, Tony. So I just wanted to uh, join this call to make sure that everybody can uh, understand what Allier offerings are within this um, environment. So one of the things that we could uh, do for organizations is come in and do a readiness assessment. This is where we use our treasury expertise. We have experience with many different treasury workstations, um, whether it's uh, Oracle product or third party applications. Come in, understand what your core requirements are, are around reconciliation and define the best fit um, within, uh, within your requirements, but also define um, how the cloud would uh, cover all your requirements. Once that's complete, we can identify what an implementation process will be for you um, using our success delivered methodology, um, lay out exactly the, uh, the timeline, the, the cost that it would take to implement the reconciliation process using the Oracle Cloud. And then if there's something within your organization that's not immediately covered by the Oracle Cloud product, we have a full development team that could generate uh, cloud component, what they call PaaS solutions, to add on to the solution to cover those requirements. So between the assessment, the implementation, and then the custom applications, we, sh we could handle all your reconciliation needs within the cloud. As part of the, the implementation, can you switch to the next slide, please? Tony? Thank you. We do follow our success delivered methodology for implementing cloud solutions, where we spend some time planning and mobilizing on any project, identifying all the appropriate uh, participants for an implementation, then go through discovery mode as to exactly what your uh, core requirements are and give yourself a roadmap for what the solution would be. Then we go into design work. So if we have any customizations or identifying what that configuration work would be, we go through a build process to actually 
configure your cloud environment or implement those additional third-party tools. We go through multiple iterations of testing, help with the deployment of this into your production environment, and then stick around for stabilization post go live activity. This is the proven methodology to make sure that you achieve success in converting from your current product to the cloud reconciliation tool. Kevin? Perfect. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate that overview. Just one last final poll question here before we open up a couple of questions that have been submitted through. What are some of the obstacles your organization faces to decide whether or not Oracle Cloud is a viable bank recon solution? So again, another please select all that apply. We understand that there's a lot of implications, a lot of factors to making a decision around something as important as reconciling your bank statements on a daily basis. So some of the unknowns related to the actual cloud application and its capabilities. Hopefully, some of those unknowns are a bit more clear after today. Obviously, uh, budget restraints. Everyone lives in that world. Uh, a lack of leadership support, as well as just overall comfort that you have with your current solution. And it looks like the majority of the folks on the call here today, the webinar today, do run an Oracle on-premise solution. So just give it a few more seconds to have everyone answer. All right, and we'll go ahead and close it out. So there's still the overwhelming kind of unknown, the uneasy feeling necessarily uh, about the Oracle Cloud solution and its capabilities. I think we will say that in our experiences here, we've had a chance to work very closely with the Oracle development team, the product strategy team, those folks that are in charge of releasing new functionality as well as making sure the current functionality is up to industry standard and meets their clients' needs. We've been very impressed so far. Oracle is absolutely uh, engaged with the Lear and a number of its early phase one clients around this solution, and they're keeping a very open mind and definitely doing a lot of listening. So we've been able to, to really pass on a lot of the feedback that folks like yourselves give us when we're supporting you on Treasury Solutions. Otherwise, just the overall comfort level with the current solution, we understand that that is the case, and should you choose to stay on-premise for the time being, you've spent a lot of time building out a lot of this functionality in your on-premise solution, we completely understand that. Just hey, briefly, Kevin. we'll mention again. Yeah, Mike? Uh, th this is actually pretty exciting because the Allure readiness assessment would really cover the first and fourth category here, where we could help you uncover what the unknown functionality around Oracle Cloud is, and also get you comfortable with the idea that it would match what your current solution is in moving you to the cloud. So um, a readiness assessment could probably take care of the majority of people on this call. That's a great point, Mike. Absolutely. Very good. Appreciate everyone taking time to answer those questions, and we'll address a couple of questions that came through via the portal. Okay, looks like the first question. What are some of the common roadblocks that a leader encounters while implementing the bank reconciliation process? And I'm guessing maybe specific to the cloud capabilities that the Oracle Cloud has. Tony? Yeah, so some roadblocks that we run into uh, when implementing this Month-end transitions for accounting and treasury departments. Um, we know that month-end may be a busy time for some teams, and there are ways around that um, by our proven methodologies. And then also, sometimes the bank might pass bad addenda or the changes the addenda. So there's some inconsistencies there, and we address those as we go as well. Perfect. Very good. Yeah, I think the... Absolutely, we've proven out that methodology over 12 years to be able to handle some of the, the main challenges. We I think we even probably try to uh, plan ahead, make sure you don't have to deal with those roadblocks. Um, another question looks like, so what is the value to implementing the cloud, you know, automation, bank statement reconciliation? I mean, what's what's the positives over just doing it today, kind of, you know, 
in Excel spreadsheets, combination there, maybe in our banking portals, as well as some of the ERP stuff uh, in our ERP that our, maybe our other teams help us out on. Yeah, so some value add for implementing automated bank reconciliation. Uh, it's more reliable and efficient than manual or and semi-manual reconciliation. Um, the matching rules and matching types that I spoke to earlier, um, those are configured on each account to really maximize that success rate when the statement is actually reconciled. And then shifting monthly to daily is another value add. Um, it allows you to get ahead of bank errors or lower days outstanding. Okay, any other you know, kind of main ads there that we didn't cover? Okay, perfect. Yeah. Cool, okay. Um, I think the last question here that we had come through is related to, uh, so it's how would the auto creation of deposits from bank statements be able to pass audit and internal control requirements? This is a question obviously around some of the existing controls that um, a lot of organizations have today. So if, if you're creating an AR deposit from a bank statement, you're recognizing through a predefined set of rules to apply this statement to an open receivable and based on reference numbers and the debiting party, we are able to actually link the payment to an open receivable and pay down that receivable and thus properly applying the cash with an end-to-end -end trail from the creation of the receivable to the debtor, making a payment to the receivable paying down to zero. Okay. Okay, very good. Very good. Those are the questions that came through. It looks like, yep, those are all the questions that came through. Perfect. Well, once again, I want to thank everyone for taking time to join this 30-minute webinar. We are looking forward to the next topic in this series. We'll get more information out to you all when that date it should be set, and we'll get more information out about the invite um, for that. It should be in about a month or so right around time when we're celebrating Thanksgiving. If you need to uh, reach out to Alir to get more information on some of the topic that was covered today, please feel free to reach out to myself, Kevin Schuster. I've got the contact information here, as well as Tony. He's happy to answer um, other questions that maybe come up. And again, one more time, we'll mention, certainly please do uh, connect with Alir on social media. A lot of information, um, you know, more kind of uh, information that's smaller bites to take outside of a webinar setting. We definitely do share a lot of that in our LinkedIn, Facebook, and et cetera. I want to thank Tony again. Appreciate everyone taking time this afternoon, and we look forward to having you on another Alir webinar series soon. Thanks so much.